Good morning, lovely friends. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm in the garden. Oh, oh I can't tell you how happy that makes me. <laughs> that happy. Um, the the light in the image that you're seeing belies the truth of the light. It's a really dark, gloomy day, but I don't care. We've had some. We've had a load more rain, but we have had some really beautiful sunny days. Oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> cat's itchy nose straight away. Um, yeah, we've had some gorgeous sunny days. I, I simply haven't been able to make it here on those days because there's been so much other stuff going on, which I shan't bore you with. I kind of alluded to some of it in the last video you saw. My Sunday on the sofa, when I wasn't on the sofa, I was sitting on the lavatory. <laughs> I have to say the lid was down. Um, so, if it, just in case anyone missed that very quickly, I basically had a problem with my computer, had to get a brand new hard drive. When that came, the editing software I had been using is gone, can't get it anymore, had to get new software. I was looking around at the various free softwares available, because my previous one was free tried a few hideous clunky horrible things couldn't work them uh my lovely friends richard and paul in the end they came over spent a whole day with me they had to go on a few and were in agreement with me that no they're not workable so in the end i've gone for a, a software that i actually have to pay for but it's worth it for the fun of being able to get videos out so with that last video we'd made a, a silly non not for showing video just to practice with the software sort of learned it then for my sunday on the sofa video they basically made me do the whole thing so i sort of did it on my own but they were standing right there <laughs> so the challenge now is <laughs> to edit this one can i remember everything i did we did they did i did uh, i did make notes so hopefully um, this shall be not necessarily straightforward, but I'll be able to do it. That's the main thing. So the point I was coming around to saying making is, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, we're right at the end of January now. And I think I've probably spent about six hours in the garden this month. I'm hoping to do a couple of hours today. Essentially, the time I've spent in the garden for the whole month is the time I would normally spend in the garden over the course of a week. You know what? It's winter. It's fine. There are loads of little outstanding jobs I would have liked to have got done, but none of them. There are no jobs where I think, oh, I've really missed the boat on that. Actually, there is one um, in terms of harvesting. Just walking onto the garden this morning, I've seen there's a load of my broccoli, um, my calabres have blown, they've started to flower. You know what? So what? I'll leave them for the bees. Because probably in another month or so, if last year's anything to go by, the bees came out really early. They came out, yeah, it was about the end of February. And there's very, very little food around for them. So if, like me, if you have any of your brassicas which are starting to go to flower, do not be in a hurry to take them out. Because almost certainly you've got nothing to put in in their place. It's not like you need that space at the moment. So if they're blowing, leave them for the bees. The bees will be very, very grateful to you. So oh, just before we go into the garden, um, this is a thank you to Susie. Just check it, Susie and not Susan. I don't want to get, oh no, not Susan. It's because her surname's S. Mary. <laughs> Mary sent me these um, really cute little plant labels. Aren't they great? I particularly like this one. I don't recall planting this. <laughs> now I'm quite good with my labels. Um, I'm quite good at knowing what I've got and where I've got it but <sighs> there's always one random stray seed isn't there there's one random thing that comes up somewhere and you think what is it and um, 
you know, we leave it in, see what happens, and then when it gets towards maturity, we go, ah, oh, that's what it is. Unless it's a squash, because half the time, the squash development, you've got no idea what they are. So, um, oh, and also, this is on my doormat on my way out this morning. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa sent me some of her spare seeds. And as instructed by her, they're actually either duplicates of things I've got or things I don't grow. So I shall pass those on as well to the community garden. Right, I've got loads of boring jobs to do today. Yes, I'm going to go on the hunt for more leaves. Um, <clears throat> all sorts of tidying things. <clears throat> Excuse me. All those jobs, I'm not going to bore you with. They're just the things I need to get on with. In terms of gathering for leaves, uh, in terms of covering my beds for the winter, I did manage to get all of that done, bar one. It's got some leaves on it, but no cardboard, so I've brought more cardboard with me today. But the reason I want to get more leaves now is for all those beds where I've got the brassicas, where I've still got things growing, they all went into beds when I planted them, they were all really heavily mulched but that mulch has gradually disappeared it's either been taken down by the worms or some of it might have blown away what have you so I'm starting to see bare bits of soil I don't want that because undoubtedly we will get quite a lot more rain now before we get really into sort of mid spring and our warmer sunnier days so I just want to get as much of that covered as possible it's not a huge priority, uh, it's one of those, I'd like to get that done if I can, but I won't, like I said, I won't bore you with it, just letting you know what I'm up to and what the sort of jobs are at this time of year. With the cold frame, <coughs> excuse me, I've got my replacement perspex for that, I couldn't carry it today because I had other stuff, which I'll show you in a second, so that will be for another day. So today I'm mostly going to be doing some sort of tinkery pottering jobs, some nice jobs because let's face it, it's been a bit of a rubbish month so I want to treat myself with nice little tinkery jobs and I've got one repair job to do. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on and do some stuff for the garden, yay! <laughs> Ah, well my first job of the day, it's that time of year, I've had a delivery. Now, <laughs> I've only just opened this now. I had this delivery a week ago, maybe 10 days ago. And like I said, I've just not had a chance to come to the garden. So I've only just opened it now and they're more than ready to come out. The potatoes! I'll show you what I mean about them needing to come out. Oh, you right. <laughs> Can you see? Oh, my goodness. So, I've got two types of spuds here. I've got my cara, which are my main crop, and my anya, which are my salad potatoes, my early new potatoes. This is they that have started sprouting madly already. So, <clears throat> to chit or not to chit and what the heck are we doing when we're chitting so first things first if you've had your delivery of potatoes you could either you can keep them in their box somewhere dark and cool frost free but cool because as they start to sense the light and sense warmth that's when they'll start to throw up these little shoots of new growth so I did keep them in their box obviously I've just opened them and taken them out of the box so it was fairly dark in the box but I had them not indoors at home on, but on my landing which is fairly cool but it's probably I would say maybe 12 to 14 degrees out there it's obviously been warm enough to um, to start them so when we when we chipped now, you don't have to chit. That's one of the main things to say. 
So if you buy your potatoes, let's say, let's say in an ideal world, I, I plant my potatoes on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th of March. That's the traditional day for planting potatoes over here. Obviously, that's going to depend on the weather because if we suddenly have a dumping of snow, <laughs> they won't get planted. Let's say then, the end of March, you're ready to plant your potatoes, but you don't have any. So you dash off to your local nursery to buy some seed potatoes and they don't have any chits. It doesn't matter, you can still plant them, plant them without chits. Most gardeners <laughs> will tell you probably one of the reasons we all start chitting our spuds in January is because it's something to do. <laughs> we feel like we're doing something for the garden. So, what we mean by chitting is starting to get them to sprout. Now, these sprouts, can you see, they're, they're spindly, they're white, they're weak, they're rubbish. That's because they've been in that dark. So I'm simply going to take them off, just snap them off, rub them off with my thumbnail, stick them in the compost. But you can see here on the top, you can see where it's getting ready to send some more sprouts out, some more shoots. I'll call them shoots, not sprouts, because sprouts and me don't get on. So when you when you get your potatoes, there's a top and a bottom. <laughs> um, it's not always obvious, so you might set them out in your trays to chit, and a few days later you may see actually it's spreading at the wrong end. Just turn it over. But yeah, if you look at the bottom there, you can see there's no sign of any sprouts there. I've just said sprouts again, never mind, we'll say sprouts. Whereas in the top, you can see they're really quite obvious. So all I will do is I'm going to stand them up in my, um, in some cells. I literally just pop them in like that. They all need rubbing. Try and work out which way is up, which way is down. Just stand them individually like that. It just means that um, I'm keeping them separate so that if if there's any issue with one of them, if one of them goes a bit hinky, like like with anything that we're storing, etc., um, hopefully any hinkiness from one doesn't affect the others. Once you've got them, a lot of people will use uh, egg cartons, old egg cartons. They're great. They're a little bit smaller, so they're even more perfect for standing your potatoes in. I don't eat eggs, so I don't have egg cartons. This will more than suffice. So once you've got them in your trays, egg cartons, whatever it is, you want to leave them somewhere light. I'm just going to rub these spindly chips off as we chat. In fact, see this is a good case in point sometimes can you see there there are some good eyes waiting to sprout these ones I don't want these down here yes yeah, so once you've got them arranged in your egg boxes cell trays like me however you're going to do it they want light they need to be somewhere light so if you're doing it at home, for example, if you've got a north-facing lean-to, a north-facing spare bedroom, because they don't want to be warm, but frost-free, put them on the windowsill, for example. So if you've got a spare bedroom, for example, that you don't, um, that you don't heat, you don't have the radiator on in there, and it's not getting too much warmth from the rest of the house, pop them on the windowsill in there. Um, I know some people will say, oh, pop them in the garage, but I think because of the lack of light in the garage, unless you've got a garage with windows, maybe you've got windows down the side of your garage, you're gonna end up with this, these very long, spindly, rubbish chits. With our chits, what we want, we want sturdy, quite stubby bits of growth. If, if I was to put these in, the chances are 
as I earth them up, and that if just in that initial planting, they'll get knocked off, they'll get bruised, damaged, they'll rot, no use. <clears throat> so yes, keep them somewhere frost free. I will leave mine in the shed. It's usually frost free. It's not too warm. I don't want it too warm because I don't want them racing away. It's it's way too soon. We've got look probably at least eight weeks before they're going to be planted. So the shed will be fine. If I get notice that we are due to have some really quite frosty conditions, I will just simply come down here. They're going to just sit on this potting bench and I'll throw a fleece over them just to give them a little bit of protection but yeah it's it's definitely one of those oh it's a point in the year that feels so it's a, <laughs> it's like a duck with a mohican <laughs> oh that's hilarious i kind of want to leave those on because they're so funny I might leave those ones on. I've got more than enough seed potatoes here. Yeah, like I was saying, I think it's one of those points of the year where the chances are at this stage we haven't sowed any any seeds. I mean, I did the sweet peas, but I sort of they don't count their flowers. Yeah, in terms of the vegetable garden, it's you know almost every year it's the first. It's the first thing that we do that's sort of the beginning of a new growing season. So, I love it, I love it. <coughs> and like I said, um, you don't have to chip your spots, but let's face it, why wouldn't you want to spend a little bit of time in the shed with your veggies, preparing for a new season? Oh, brilliant. One of the things I've always tried to do with the garden and home, everything really, is do everything with no spend or the least amount of money spent as possible. I've always been that way, um, but now more so than ever. And I'm sure there are a lot of you out there like me who you want a great garden, you want loads and loads of lovely produce out of it, but you either haven't the money to spend or you don't want to spend. So you keep your eyes peeled when you're out and about because that skip, it may just have the perfect piece of timber in it to fix the shed or to make a shed. Piles of bricks. Oh my goodness, I so need some more bricks. I haven't seen any bricks for ages. I need to go out with my granny trolley on a proper hunt. But yeah, well, I'm always looking for bits and pieces to use in the garden. It's not that I go out specifically looking for things and I don't have a shopping list. It's more that when I see stuff out the corner of my eye, I think, oh, I can use you. Brilliant. So the other day, someone had just put a load of these out. These five litre water bottles. It's clean, it's brand new. Basically, someone's bought water in a bottle. I was going to say that's crazy because we've got perfectly potable um, tap water however in my street over the last couple of weeks we've been intermittently losing our water because they're fixing the water main I say fixing in the loosest way possible because it's been going off two weeks anyway so perhaps they bought the water because we didn't have water we've we've been having periods of no water anyway the point is I saw a bunch of these I've only managed to cart one down today because of loads of other stuff in the trolley but these I'm going to get two things out of this today. Fantastic. 
So I just made a start of a cut. <coughs> what I'm going to do is, it's going to be noisy now, I'm just going to cut around the bottom here, straightish line. I kind of would have cut a bit lower down, like more here, but that goes all around in a wavy line. I don't want a wavy line. I want it straight because that is a beer trap. That's a great beer trap. So for any of you who are new to my like new to my channel, haven't watched before. Um, I use beer traps with the slugs to get rid of my slugs. So this I will put into the corner of the bed, one of the beds, sink it down a little ways, maybe put the soil to there. Half a can of cheap, cheap, cheap lager in there. Uh, slugs come along, have a drink, get completely drunk and drown. Now, I don't like killing things, but the bottom line is, oh, that's my food. Oh, that's my food. If I don't kill slugs, I don't eat and I die. So it's either me or the slugs. So if anyone's got an issue with me killing slugs, get over it, because it's my food. Um, <clears throat> and at least this way, I like to think of it as a happy death for them because they'll be absolutely trollied. And I'm not harming anything or anyone else by doing it this way. So, beer trap. And then of course, this bit, becomes a little cloche. How fantastic. So, my, is that rain? Oh, you're flipping kidding me. It's not supposed to rain today. Oh, hang on a sec, my drill's outside. <sighs> that is so annoying. <laughs> I just don't need any more rain at the moment. It's sod's law, isn't it? We've had two Maybe more, I've lost track now, but really glorious days and I've missed them just because I've been going backwards and forwards to my great aunt's lot. Anyway, yes, makes a great little cloche. So for example, when I plant out my squash or things like cucumbers, they are incredibly tender little plants. I usually wait until the end of about May to plant them they need to be consistently above six to eight degrees centigrade so obviously i'm keeping an eye on nighttime temperatures and by then we should be fine however sometimes if we're really sort of on that cusp and hovering i just pop these little things on for about a week or so so sorry i should have said i, I start all of those plants at home or the squash I start them at home about mid-May, I bring them down to the garden and they go into the cold frame to begin the hardening off process. In other words, again this is for, because I know there's loads of you who've got your first plot this year, yay! So this is just advice for beginners, I know a lot of you out there will know all of this. When people talk about hardening off, it's, it's talking about basically toughening the plants up for the shock of the change between being at home, nice and cosy, warm, they've been in propagators, they've been on your sunny window sills at home, you may still have had your central heating on a little bit, they've been cosseted. If we bring them straight to the garden and don't give them any hardening off, any protection, the chances are they'll keel over because it's just too much of a shock. So when we talk about hardening off, we're talking about giving the plants a little bit of exposure to the real world at a time and gradually increasing that exposure. So with my squash, I bring them down, they go into the cold frame. I usually give them a week or two. <clears throat> and on the first day they're here, I'll have the cold frame open for say a couple of hours, close it, especially for night. And then over that period of, well, yeah, a couple of weeks, leave the cold frame open for a bit longer each time and get to the stage where I even leave it open in the evening. Then they go out into the garden and they're, that's it, they're on their own. Except, like I say, if it's getting a bit chilly, I can whack these on just for a little bit more protection. I don't put the, I don't keep the lids on 
when I do it because um, what I don't want to do is trap a load of moisture in there it gets warm 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 that all that moisture that's in the soil is being evaporated into basically it's going to make a really humid environment in there and that could then rot the plant so it's all about balancing isn't it we want to keep them a bit protected a bit warm but we don't want to create humidity and rot them so yeah brilliant have a look when you're out and about um, if you know that you have friends neighbors who get these five liter water bottles for their consumption at home don't know why anyone would these days but maybe people do um, ask them for their leftovers and you get yourself a free cloche I don't know how much cloches cost if you were to buy them but they're going to cost more than free aren't they right what's this weather doing because all my other jobs now are out there maybe we'll just sit for five minutes and do some cat cuddling and hopefully it'll pass fingers crossed Oh, it's still spitting with rain, but I can get on with this job. <laughs> you see what's happened? Oh, sorry. Oh, and here comes the wind now. Yeah, my sign has completely... Where's the little... Oh, I'll come around this way. Yeah, it's <clears throat> rotted and sheared off. I'll keep the wedge, that'll be useful. Oh, yeah totally rotten right there, over there. so I think all I'm going to do I haven't got another piece of wood for now so I'm going to take this up to the shed and uh, chop the bottom off and see if I can at least resurrect this for this season but what I do want to do is get that off the ground because I don't want my actual sign to rot all right quick sticks horrid rain all right not much off been a bit naughty and a bit lazy I cannot be bothered fishing out my workbench hopefully this table will hold up oh, it's so wet I don't know whether this is gonna work I might as well give it a go though and then in the meantime, exactly what I was saying before about the, the free cloches, I'll just keep an eye out in skips. Yeah, I can feel this, this wood is full of woodworm holes, it's quite spongy. But I think that met post holder, the holder that's in the ground is like a metal spike with a, a cup in the top. I think that's four before. I'll measure it but if it's four before which I think it is that'd be great because that's the kind of off cut that I quite often do see in skips and for most of the stuff I want to do around the plot four before is too big so I kind of walk past leave it I shouldn't have done should I right let's see if this will work I'm not going to take you down the garden because it's raining but it would be nice to have my happiness sign back up where it should be. Look how green it's got on the bottom just from sitting on the ground for... It's been about a week and a half, ten days or so, it's since Storm Bernard. Right, let's go and get this stuck in. This rain is not stopping. It's only light, um, but... I don't want to take the camera out there, that's one thing. But also, oh, I don't know, all the jobs I want to do today, I don't really want to be doing them in the rain. Ah, frustrating. It's one of those days where, um, I'm sure you all get them too, I'm trying to toss up what to do. <clears throat> I've been in the shed since I fixed the sign. Um, which has gone back in okay, it's fine, for now. <laughs> that wood is really rotten though. Yeah, um, I've been in the shed for the last hour or so, just sort of pottering about, tidying up, sorting, looking for my box of screws, which I still haven't found. I didn't find them at home this morning. I've got things, I've got some signs and bits and pieces to screw onto my fence. Anyway, yeah, I can't find my screws anywhere. <laughs> 
I guess it must be at home. I'll have another look. Anyway, the point is, um, it doesn't look like this is going to pass through anytime soon. I can't afford to just sit in the shed all day. That's ridiculous. So it's one of those days where I think one has to just say to oneself, right, the garden, it's not going to happen today. I'll check the weather forecast. I'll look for the next period of um, nice weather. I think we've got about five or six days of rain, rain, rain coming up. Um, and I'll just reschedule today if I can. Because of everything else that's gone on in January, I'm so behind on a million and one jobs indoors anyway. So it's one of those days of saying, right, my mindset was for the garden. I was really looking forward to it. I had a really long list of jobs, but some of them were really lovely jobs. It's not going to happen. Just make that call right now. Get home, get on with other stuff. And by doing the other stuff, that will free up a day in hopefully about a week's time. It'll be February before I'm in the garden again. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like I said, I have spent in January less time in the whole month than I would normally spend in a week. Even less than that. Don't matter. You know, like I said, nothing's urgent, nothing's precious. At least I've got those spuds out of the box because they were dying to get going. So, yeah, leave them. That's it. I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> I don't know when I'll see you again next. Um, probably for the my end of the month roundup at home. I've got a feeling the next five videos will all be from indoors, which is such a shame, isn't it? Because I think we all prefer the garden videos. Anyway, it's just how it is. So for now, I'm going to say cheerio to you all. I hope you're getting some dry days to be in your gardens. And I know, before you all scream at me, I know there's a lot of you who can't garden from October right through till March, April, May because of snow. <laughs> I know, I get it. Um, I do feel for you and I am so grateful to live in this mild climate. Uh, so yes, for those of us with a climate similar to mine, I hope you're getting some dry days in which to get out and enjoy your garden. If you can't do that, go home and read a good book or do some sewing. Oh, it'll be time to do some indoor sewing soon. Yay! Right, before I get too daydreamy, I'm going to say cheerio properly. Take care of yourselves, everyone. I'll see you again soon, I hope.